the support that we have received developmentally, financially uh, from Alban Petro Carib. Um, I'm not sure uh, where St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and indeed the wider Caribbean, because most Caribbean countries benefit from Petro Carib. I'm not sure where we would stand uh, in the current global economic context. He further thanked the organizations and other countries who have helped with the development of SVG. We have them to thank for a number of people-centered developmental projects, uh, from employment to education. We have them to thank for uh, an embryonic trade partnership that, we are, that, that is beginning between St. Vincent and the Grenadines, uh, Venezuela and other countries in Alba. We have them to thank very shortly uh, for completing the One Laptop Per Child program, placing a laptop in the hands of every student in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And we have them to thank for assisting us with cooking gas. We have them to thank for many times when this government and the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines uh, run into some difficulty, some short-term difficulty. Following the signing of the agreement to deepen relations with Ecuador, government officials led a tour to the leeward side of the island yesterday afternoon with Ecuador's ambassador, Galo Yepes, to observe several projects that are being undertaken on that side of the island through the Bolivarian Alliance for the Americas, ALBA, and the Petro, the Petro Caribe agreements. Kristen John has more on the tour in this report. The Lomans Bay Fuel Storage Distribution Plant is among the number of projects undertaken through the Venezuela-led petro -Carib Agreement. This project, which commenced in 2008, is expected to be completed by 2014, and when completed, the plant will be used to store diesel, gasoline, and LPG cooking gas. On the tour, Ambassador of the Republic of Ecuador, Galo Yepes, said the main purpose of the visit is to see firsthand what is taking place. Uh, of course, if there is any problem, just yes, try to speed up processes. Uh, I'm also with the ambassador at large for the Caribbean of the Venezuelan government and the representative of the big company that is building this facility. So it's, uh, it's a routine uh, uh, visit of uh, St. Vincent and uh, we had a meetings with the Prime Minister where we discussed um, the problems or you know details of the projects and things that we have to speed up but also the need for a more strategic view of the relationship uh, between not only Venezuela but in the context of petro Carib and uh, St. Vincent. The ambassador noted that so far they are very pleased with the progress not only on the fuel storage site but other projects being undertaken here. We have to, to move on, to, to, to speed up because this is a very it's a, it's a needed project for, for St. Vincent and of course we'll, we'll see that things are moving and uh, this is going to be the starting point of the big uh, of, 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 of situation that would allow us to, to explore a different kind of projects with, uh, between Petro Carib and, and San Vincent. On Wednesday's tour, a visit was also paid to the proposed site for a major hotel development project to be undertaken in the Peters Hope area as announced last week by Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonsalves. The Ecuadorian ambassador's tour to the leeward side of the island follows a series of meetings held with the Prime Minister and the Minister of Foreign Affairs. On Wednesday, November 13, 2013, a memorandum of understanding was signed to deepen relations between both Ecuador and SVG. Kristen John Dean reporting for SVG TV News. Vincentian lawyer and former politician René Batiste is among the four key speakers named to address the 2014 Caribbean Phenomenal Women's Symposium slated for Dominica on January 25, 2014. Speaking to the local media yesterday, Valda Henry, Chief Executive Officer of VF Incorporated, says the 2014 symposium will be held under the theme, What You Can Achieve, Because God Has the Power to Deliver What He Promises. Henry says among the objectives of the Women's Symposium is to celebrate the successes of Caribbean women. So now as we say Caribbean women to tell the stories of joy, blessings, overcoming adversity, to inspire women to let them recognize that they too can achieve their life's mission and their life's purpose 
even if they may be going for a difficult time. But we also, it's not just to be comforted and be inspired, but also to, one of the things we encourage, and so it is included as part of the, the, the material that the participants receive, is an action plan. So we encourage persons to develop an action plan to achieve their dreams, achieve their goals, stage by stage, to reaffirm the role of women as healers of the nation, and to establish a network of support and opportunities for women. Henry says, contrary to what some have stated, the symposium is not designed to bash the men of the Caribbean, adding, the, adding that four very powerful and qualified speakers are already making, their, making, pre, making ready their pre presentations. This year we are using St. Vincent Vincent in a row, because last year, um, this year, January 2014, Karen Hines from St. Vincent, though based in the U.S., was one of our speakers. And in 2014, um, Ms. Reni Batis, better known as Ms. B, to all of you on Mama Culture, um, well known, um, is going to be one of our speakers. And I, and I can tell you already, I can feel the power um, of that presentation. And um, we have one speaker from Montserrat. This will be the first year Montserrat will be represented. And we have Ms. Rose Willock who worked for Radio Antilles for many years and who is also a very culture, a, a cultural icon in Montserrat. And out of Dominica we have Mrs. Neva Edwards who was a former speaker of the House um, of Parliament and Mrs. Oliva Douglas who is the wife of one of our most popular politicians, Michael Douglas, and the, the mother of our current Minister of Tourism. Meanwhile, René Batiste applauded the organizers of the symposium for coming forward and creating an environment where Caribbean women can share their stories and successes. What helps when I listen to BBC, they were doing a special on 100 women, and I was listening to Mrs. Sherry Blair yeah. speaking about her role as a, a mother, as a wife of a politician and as a barrister and what she was able to do using uh, her political clout uh, and what she was able to achieve as a barrister. And there is going to be that body of work available for people in that part of the hemisphere. But where is our body of work for the young women in this side of the hemisphere? Particularly as we would have noticed, coming through our educational institutions is a large large percentage of young men who are aggressively pursuing higher level of education to move into new professions you know they need they, they somehow I think they need even more motivation other than motivation to one please parents to to do something for themselves an appeal made for the nation's youth to take diabetes and their health seriously more stories on the local scene when SVG TV's Evening News continues. Welcome back to the Evening News. As the week of activities to commemorate World Diabetes Day continues, a health fair was held today at Heritage Square. The fair, held under the theme Diabetes Education and Prevention, was hosted by the Community Nursing Service in the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment. The event saw a number of organizations coming together to educate Vincentians on diabetes and how to prevent and control this non-communicable disease. Representative of the Ministry of Health, Feroza Roach, says that the purpose of the event is to build awareness among the Vincentian population, especially the young, about the warning signs and risk factors of diabetes. And to drive home the fact that in many cases, diabetes can be prevented and controlled through healthy eating and physical activity. Diabetes is a global epidemic with devastating humanitarian, social, and economic consequences. This disease claims many lives and limbs each year and places a, a severe burden on the healthcare system and on economies worldwide. Roach notes that according to the World Health Organization and the International Diabetes Federation, the number of people diagnosed with that should be the number of people with diabetes globally stands at 250 million and projections indicate that this number will increase to over 380 million by 2025. 
Employment organization further projects a 170% increase in the number of people with diabetes in developing countries by 2025. It is very clear that diabetes has become a significant public health problem in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and the current trend of incidence and prevalence of this disease and other associated chronic non-communicable diseases represents a major threat to the health of Vincentians. Meantime, Minister of Health Clayton Bergen described diabetes as a major health problem that is emerging as a grave pandemic globally. Minister Bergen says it is therefore of extreme importance for Vincentians to pay an enormous amount of attention to the disease. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, we must continue to make it a national priority. This year, the theme Diabetes Education and Prevention with the slogan Diabetes protect our future. The burden of diabetes is steadily increasing globally. In 2011, the International Diabetes Federation reported that 366 million persons were diagnosed with diabetes and projected that this number would increase to 552 million by 2030. I would like to emphasize here this morning that the burden of the disease is enormous and does not only come when one is diagnosed, but rather when complication sets in and disability reduces the quality of life. And young people here are being urged to get the facts about diabetes early. Delivering the feature address at today's World Diabetes Health Fair, Andrew Cummings says he is concerned about the young people today, stressing the importance for them to learn about the non-communicable disease by educating themselves with the necessary information available. I worry about the high rate of diabetes in the Caribbean. In China, there are 114 million diabetics. In the Caribbean, there are probably 10 million or thereabout, maybe more. You have heard it from speaker after speaker, even the sister who spoke a while ago, of how important it is for you to avoid diabetes. And if you do contract it, the controls that are necessary. Cummings, who is also diabetic, says persons with the disease can live a normal life, but they will have to control their eating habits. And proper control as you have heard time and time again, means regular exercise, medication if prescribed, a healthy diet, and of course, what I call discipline, willpower, and determination. Earlier today, the police training school came out on top in the first colloquium to be hosted here by the Ministry of Tourism. The groups which participated in the competition, which was held at the NIS training room, were the Division of Arts, Sciences and General Studies of the SVG Community College, who secured the second spot, and the Division of Nursing, who had to settle for third. For copying the top position, the participants representing the police training school will receive an all-expenses one-day trip, that should be an all-expenses paid one-day trip to Mustique. The Division of Arts, Sciences and General Studies will receive a day at the Beckway Beach Hotel, while the Division of Nursing will receive dinner at Young Island. According to the event Master of Ceremony, Gloria Williams, the colloquium forms part of activities to mark Tourism Month and was designed to have tertiary-level students here create projects they deem necessary for sustainable local tourism. With a project that impressed with originality and practicality, that whose theoretical side needed a bit more development, but it was a project that was obviously, that obviously exhibited sustainability. It actually was called by the judges enticing. Ladies and gentlemen, let us congratulate the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Training School. Here are some expert excerpts from today's presentations. After learning a bit about the dancers, drums, and African dress code, our guests will participate in cooking of traditional smoked foods and the opening of the maroon ring. 
We will also get to perform the African dances they had rehearsed, such as nation dance, bonga dance, lyrics dance, chirp dance, and a kalinda dance to the rhythm of the African drums. So what is Vinci by Morning's Christmas Package? It's an all-inclusive vacation package that offers reduced hotel rates, ecotourism, social cultural experiences. Our two goals of the Vinci Nine Mornings Christmas Package, first is to integrate heritage, tourism, with other elements of the national tourism product. To increase visitor arrivals and length of stay by offering a Christmas vacation package. We in SVG must be willing to place environmental conservation ahead of economic profit if we want this project to be successful. At the end of the day, we all need to remember that tourism is everybody's business. Live it, love it, embrace it.